Hi everyone, I'm Adam from Audient, and today we're going to be looking at connecting PreSona Studio One to an Audient ID interface. In this case, I have an ID14 here, but this also works with an ID4, ID24, and ID44. First things first, we're going to need to set up our interface by plugging it in, setting up drivers, and then we'll plug in a microphone and make sure we have signal before we begin. We can also use a Windows PC, the setup is practically identical. First things first, I've got an ID14 here today, but the process is the same for an ID4, ID24, and ID44. We take our USB-C cable. If you have a computer that only has USB-A ports, that should work absolutely fine. You can get USB-A to USB-C cables and plug that into your interface and the interface will turn on. In the case of the ID44, you will also need to plug that in to external power. On my screen, it's asking me if I should allow this accessory to connect. Of course, that's what we want. And now not much else will happen because we need to install the drivers. I'm going to open up my browser, which in this case is Chrome, and go to audient.com. Here we can go to the product page and find our product. In my case, here the ID14. And on this page is a button that says downloads. Just down the page, there is the Mac driver or the Windows driver. Download whichever one you need. And in my case, I have to drag and drop the ID onto applications. On Windows, you would double click on the installer and then run through the steps as necessary as it guides you. Now on Mac, I do have to open my applications and open that ID app one time. And then that will ask me, that's downloaded from the internet, are you sure? Yes. It would like to access the microphone, which in this case is the ID14's microphones. We can check for updates automatically. And there's the Arc Creative Hub, which in this case, I'm already a member, but if you'd like to join Arc, then you get lots of opportunities for wonderful free plugins, free software, discounts, all sorts of great offers. Check that out. I'm going to click already a member and then close that down. Now you will be able to see at the top right corner, the ID icon, which tells me that the ID mixer is installed and the ID drivers are active. Now, if I click this and go to show mixer, that will show me everything about the ID14 in real time. Same with the 24 and 44. The ID4 has a slightly different setup. There is no mixer with the drivers, but the ID4 is so relatively simple that it's a slightly different kind of thing. And that will still come up absolutely fine. Next, I'm going to plug in a microphone and make sure that's all working perfectly well. In my case, I have a studio condenser microphone here, and I'm going to plug this in to the ID14 on channel one. On the ID series of interfaces, we do need to engage phantom power for condensers on a switch on the front of the interface. So I'm going to turn on 48 volts now. And then once that has settled, I'm going to turn up the gain, which is the, the knob on the front, until I'm getting a reasonable level that you can see on the screen there. Now I know that's ready for when we open our door. Okay, so our microphone is working and our interface is plugged in. We have the ID mixer here ready to go. Let's open up Studio One 6. So it's loading up all of my plugins and all that kind of stuff. And then we come to the home screen. Now, the first thing we need to do before we dive into a project is we need to set up our audio device and Handily, in the middle of the screen here at the bottom, is Setup. And of course, it's currently set to MacBook Pro speakers, which is not what we want to use. We want to click Configure Audio Device here and change the playback and recording device to both be our audience ID interface. By changing one, that's automatically changed the other one for me. And then we have Device Block Size. Block Size is related to latency. So, if your computer can handle a lot very, very quickly, then you can have a very low block size. 
and that means that the delay in between the sound coming from a microphone through the interface through studio one then back out to the headphones and speakers is very low so there's very little delay or latency but if you start to get quite a complicated project going with a lot demanded of your computer you may find that you start to get pops and clicks and dropouts those are buffer underruns and the way to get around that is to increase this block size of buffer so that there's a little more time for studio one to do what it needs to do the default here is 512 samples which is fine for most things i tend to have it slightly lower at 256 and that works perfectly well for me and then i can hit and then i can press ok that has now changed this whole setup to be using the audience id 14. so let's make ourselves a new project we're going to go to new and i'm going to go record and mix i'll leave the name as it is but feel free to change the name as you wish and the sample rate i will change here so the settings for sample rate 44.1 kilohertz is generally accepted as the cd production standard 48 kilohertz the one that i tend to use is the one that is relevant to film dvd any modern video production whether it's youtube or anything else online so anything like that i tend to use 48 kilohertz there are options above that but those are quite a lot more esoteric let's hit ok and now we have an empty project so the first thing i'm going to want to do is click in this blank space and i'm going to add a mono audio track because i only have one microphone for one voice in this case so i'm adding a mono audio track and that's using input l input left analog one because this is connected to analog one and now if i hit record here we can hear this coming out of the system so as i speak or sing this will be monitoring through studio one and we can see that because of this blue icon here which is monitor if we need to not hear this through studio one i can click that and then now we will not be monitoring through studio one we have a few choices we can monitor and then any effects that are applied whether it's distortion compression eq or anything else will be heard as we record through studio one but that does incur that small amount of latency when we talked about block size alternatively if you already have monitoring in the room you can simply turn that off or if we open the id mixer which is at the top we can see our levels coming in here and we can pull up this fader and so that will now be going directly from the microphone through the id interface and straight back through the headphones or speakers do be careful of feedback in this case now you may find that you have a strange phenomenon that i call ghosting where the input sounds kind of hollow like there's a chorusing effect or a doubling effect usually what's happening there is that the monitoring from studio one and the near zero latency monitoring from the id mixer are happening at the same time so we need to choose which one we want to use and turn off the other one so in my case here i'm going to pull down the fader for the id mixer and make sure that the monitoring is on in studio one or the other way around and use one but not both hopefully this is enough to get you started with recording in studio one if you need any more help there are loads of studio one specific tutorials out there but if you need help with your audience interface don't hesitate to look on the audience.com website for lots of help tips and tricks and also there is the support team that you can contact Thanks for watching, good luck, and I'll see you soon.